Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm um, outside in a public area, so I'm wearing my uh, dome of coronavirus protection. Yesterday, for the first time in a while, we have seen headlines that were more important than whatever lies and BS that jackass who calls himself president is like trying to divert us with. We saw headlines that were more important than the coronavirus. And it's true, these headlines are more important because a large number of people in our country, you know, anyone who's not white, anyone who is not white and wealthy, um, and you guys know me, I'm a very spiritual person, but I'm also really down to earth. My background is in science, you know, my college degree was in geology, I have advanced degrees in food science and nutrition. I um, I don't speak up unless I do my research. Yesterday, I did a lot of research. I called um, professionals, I called politicians, I called professors, and had actual, you know, conversations about what's going on so that when I speak today, I can speak with honesty and um, integrity. And here is what I think. Um, if you are a white person, there are things going on you don't understand. Even, okay, <laughs> that's a blanket statement. If you don't understand what's going on, then don't judge. Reach out to people who do understand. And that doesn't mean you have to reach out to people of color to understand, but reach out to people who do understand and say, explain to me. I had, um, I have looked on social media and I saw my girlfriends of color who were calling out in pain saying, hey, white people, speak up for us. And I saw these same people being lambasted and heckled and criticized and insulted, harassed by the very people that they thought were their friends. You know, if someone's reaching out in pain, especially if it's someone that you know is a good person who's always been your friend, don't be, you know, an ass to them. Reach out and say, I don't understand, but I'm here for you. Don't criticize what you don't know. Because I saw a lot of that yesterday. A lot of that. A lot of judgment coming from people who, if you want to know what white privilege is, white privilege is when you don't understand because you never had to understand. So I'm not going to go on a big rant, but I am going to say this. Based on the information I gathered yesterday, again, talking with like professors um, and political advocates, politicians, sociologists, I am of the belief that there is a political agenda in our country right now to try to separate women from people of color. And I think this is because there are people in power right now who know that they will not win the next election if the women and people of color are not in their favor. So one of the professors I spoke with, oh, hold on, sorry, I dropped my cup and don't want it to roll down the parking lot. So one of the women I spoke with, who's a, a professor of sociology at a university, knew all the terms. Like I was asking her, what's going on with this? And she knew all the terms and everything. It's an actual thing. but. I don't remember the terms. I was walking my dog when we were talking, so I didn't write it down. But basically, it's a, you know, I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to sound like racist while talking against racism, so I apologize for that, but I don't know how else to express it. 
basically white men in power want to stay in power so they look at the women and say look at that you're in danger look at that these other people are aggressing upon you you should feel frightened and the only one who can protect you is me this is exactly like how an abusive spouse would behave or an abusive employer right and we know better however it's a subconscious manipulation and these people have a lot of power they manipulate headlines they manipulate the news they manipulate what information comes out and they manipulate like so much we don't even realize we're being manipulated until suddenly we are like the epitome of abused women and we don't get it so I'm telling you my women friends no matter what color you are I urge you today call people you know that you care about who are not white call them and say I just want you to know I'm here for you and if there's anything you need reach out to me I did this yesterday at first I felt like oh my god are they going to say that's the epitome of white privilege how dare you assume that this is a call I would want or need I was like really nervous and I'll tell you every person I reached out to had so much appreciation and gratitude and we had real conversations like just heart to heart so and every single one of them said I was the only white person they knew who reached out and let them know so that should change that should change right now call people you know of color let them know you're here for them if you wonder why people are rioting in the streets um, go on last night which would be May 28th CNN with Chris Cuomo and watch last night's episode because he was interviewing people about this and we were get we got different perspectives you know like multiple different perspectives of what's going on do not judge until you know what's going on and until you know what's going on reach out your hand to those in need you know look to all the great people who stood for humanity look to Martin Luther King look to Pete Seeger and what would they do you know so I urge you I urge you don't be judgmental do not let your grief or fear cause you to harm those who are saying I'm in pain please help me and if you think that someone is saying I'm in pain and you won't understand because you have white privilege say to them you know what you know what Maria kudos to you kudos to you that you don't watch the news and you know keep your frequency up you know I see that I don't watch the news all of them are completely biased I agree with you so it doesn't matter if you watch the news or not just reach out to people hold out your hand and say I am here for you we are one you know I'm sorry this is like I'm crying now because it's just it kills me that loving kind spiritual people are being torn apart by what I see as a political agenda of greedy people who want to stay in power and keep us running in circles and fighting each other rise above that connect with humanity and really like just be there for the people that you know in your heart they're people they're human beings be there for each other um, so that's all for the message I will say one element um, about my history oh thank you Milena <laughs> I love you too um, some of you know I have a background as an advocate for special needs youth so even though you look at me and go like maybe who is this white chick to talk about us um, all of us women if we're women in the world we know what it's like to be aggressed upon 
um, if you go to any group of women and say, raise your hand if you were ever raped, you know, the majority of us will raise our hands. Mine will be up. If you say, okay, maybe you don't think of it as raped, but you had to have sex even though you didn't want to, then, you know, every hand will go up. You know, if any of us are told, like, I can't tell you how many times I got in trouble at work for being too smart, I made the boys look bad. You know, so we know, we know. Therefore, it is imperative that we stand with others who know what it's like to be aggressed upon and to be demeaned and looked down upon, not standing against them. You know, I've, my girlfriends of color who have children, they're terrified right now. If you are a woman of color, black, brown, you know, and you have a son, I guarantee this is a terrifying moment. So if you are a white person and you have children, imagine what it would be like if, yes, Lori, there has to be reform. There has to be. And this is why we need to stand together and demand that we get politicians who bring us change, not politicians who manipulate us so they can remain as they are. And yes, Mitch McConnell, I am talking to you. Donald Trump, I'm talking to you. So you guys, you know, I was an advocate for special needs youth for many years. It was volunteer. I had an organization that my son and I created to help youth uh, get um, uh, rescue dogs and train them to become their own service dogs. And this was because at that time, a service dog cost thirty to $50,000 and it took several years to get. And you know, a kid with autism, anxiety, agoraphobia, like I, we specialized in emotional behavioral dogs, a kid who's dying of cancer, they don't have that money or that time. So we taught, you know, and those of you know, Lord Snaggletooth, he was our, he was our head instructor. Um, we helped hundreds of children get service dogs in the here and now. And we created programs that integrated special needs youth with the kids in their community so that everyone was friends with everyone. And for this, members of my family were arrested literally for made up charges. One of my sons almost spent his entire life in jail on completely trumped up charges. Police would follow me wherever I went within my local district and the one district next to us, they would follow me, like tailing me, less than one car length apart, trying to get me to go above or below the speed limit so that they could pull me over. They went through my garbage to try to find a reason to get a search warrant and come into my home. Like, this was because I, yes, Melena, yes, your black coworkers fear for the future of their children, yes. So all of this happened to me, like one of the white privileged ladies, because I stood up for the legal rights of special needs children. And not even like the legal in the law, just community at no cost to anyone. So if that's happening to me, and luckily at this time in my life, everyone is safe. But when people ask, why did you close your wellness center? Why did you sell everything you own? Yes, my guides told me to do that. But the reason they told me to do that is I found out several months later, there was a group of adults in our community and I know who they are. And yes, they are all Trump lovers who had formed a secret group that was stalking my family and their goal was to murder my son. So, because they didn't think that he and I deserve to be in our community. So that's the kind of hatred that I experienced. The whole reason my family is alive is because I walked away from everything I owned and every, my business, everything I had built, my way to care for my family, support my family. I had to walk away from all of that so that my children could be safe. So I'm lucky, I'm very lucky. My family is alive and healthy. 
and I'm able to continue my work in a different way. There's a lot of people out there right now who deal with everything I dealt with times so much more, with a history of 400 years of this weighing upon them. So I am telling you, if you are a white person right now and you have been dismissive of your friends of color lately, call them and apologize and say, you know what, I, and let them rant on you because they have a big open wound they may need to just express out before they can calm down. Don't fight with them. Don't put them down. Reach out your hand. Be there for your friends. Thank you so much. This was exploding out of me. This was, um, my heart is breaking into pieces because decent human beings are targeted and because those who are supposed to be there for them are judging them. So thank you. And you know what? If you can share this post, share it. I don't mind being the weird person that everyone's like, who the hell is she or whatever. If you don't want to like speak up for, you know, I mean, I get it. It's scary. Feel welcome to share my post. I've spoken up a lot of times and it nearly got my family, you know, it did get my family incarcerated. It got me incarcerated on false reasons. It got people I love incarcerated on false reasons. It got us nearly killed. It lost us everything. And I'm still speaking up and I will always speak up. So I urge you, if you are afraid to speak up, I get it, then share my post. Let's see, you know, let's just like get to the point where we women of all races are standing with all people of all races. And then anyone who is opposed to this beautiful rainbow community can look at us and see how powerful we are and then maybe they will change their agenda instead of trying to squash us. So, I love you guys. If you watch this all the way to the end, thank you, thank you. I love you. And if you have love in your heart, go forward with that. Thank you so much. Bye.